This girl will do anything to pay off her student loans. And I mean anything. We opened with Emily at an interview for an important job. Apparently, she has a criminal record. I see. We're going straight into this one with the title, Emily the Criminal. The interviewer tells her they don't run background checks and asks her to tell him all about her record. She says it's just a DUI, but they actually, in fact, do run background checks. And it so happens that she was convicted of aggravated assault in 2016. She's shocked they have all her information. And the man is now saying if she wants them to be honest with her, then she has to be honest with them too. So he asks her to tell him all about her criminal history. She says okay, but just as she's about to, she changes her mind. She's mad that she was tricked, and she's just like, to hell with this job. So she gets up and leaves. Relatable. She grabs her file on her way out, and also mentions that she has 17000 in student debt. Also relatable. Now she's back to her old job making deliveries for a food company. On her way back, a co-worker stops her and begs her to take his shift because he wants to take his son to a baseball game. She doesn't usually work downtown at night, but she does him this favor. Before he leaves, he hooks her up with someone to text that can help her make $200 an hour. Later, she goes home and gets on a call with her account manager. She's having money problems. Then she goes out to cover that guy's shift. His name is Javier, by the way. She's now in the car sketching, and then she decides to text the number Javier gave her. The person asks if she wants to make $200 an hour. Then she asks, doing what? Good question. But then they give her an address to show up at the next day, and say they'll explain when she gets there. Hmm, that seems a little fishy. But she's poor, so what do you expect her to do? Anyway, that night she goes out to meet an obviously more successful friend at a bar. Her name is Liz. They're talking about their different realities. She asks Emily if she's still painting and she says no because paint is expensive and she doesn't have a job. Just paint a dollar bill. I'm sure that'll work. Anyway, Emily says she's considering going back to Jersey to live with her stepdad and save some money. Then her friend offers to get her an interview at her company. Though Emily's concerned her record will get in the way again, but her friend promises she'll vouch for her. So they focus on getting one drink and going home. But one drink turned to them eating salt through their nose in the bathroom and then doing push-ups on the street. The next day, Emily shows up at the appointment. Remember, the one I said looks fishy? It's a laundry place and she meets a guy who asks for her driver's license and asks who referred them to her. She tells him his name and he calls Javier on the spot to confirm. Imagine lying to these guys. Well, she then goes to get her picture taken and joins a bunch of other people waiting. What she's doing there, she still doesn't know, but she has her pepper spray just in case. A man comes to address them. He tells them they'll make $200 an hour. They won't be in danger, they won't endanger anyone, but they will be breaking the law. Sign me up. Then some men hand them some cards and papers and tell them to go into a store and buy flat screen TVs. Is this a Mr. Beast challenge? The men will be waiting outside to collect the merchandise from them and they get paid. It's that simple. As it turns out, the information on the cards is stolen and that's enough to make some people leave. The guy addressing them, Yusuf, tells them they can leave if they're not cool with it, but it's pointless calling the police because they won't show up. Typical. At this point, Emily stands up to leave and Yusuf stops her and asks her what the problem is. She then asks how they know the cards work. He says, you don't. That's the hard part. You have to trust me. Then she asks, what if they ask for a driver's license? And a man hands her one with her picture and the name Goodwin Jennifer L. They obviously just made this license, but it looks used. These guys are pros. That's enough to convince her, so she goes to do it. She's in the mall now and she picks a cap to hide her face from security cameras. She goes, picks a TV, and goes to pay for it. She's a little jittery while she's paying, and the thing takes an eternity to process, but it eventually goes, and she's out. We're clear. Oh no. A security guy is following her. Oh, okay, he's only asking about the hat she took. She didn't pay for it. She just takes it off and hands it back to him. All good. We're clear for real now. They retrieve the TV from her and pay her in cash. In the van, the man also gives her a burner phone and tells her she can choose to do another job, but it'll be a little more complicated. She asks what she'll have to do and he says, clap someone, but not in the fun way. You could see her soul leave her body when she heard that, but he was only kidding. He says he'll text her by 1pm the next day and they'll tell her what to do when she shows up. But you know what's crazy? Tomorrow's job will be for $2,000. That's 10 times today's gig. Even Minecraft YouTubers are tempted. The following morning, she's at her other job with Javier and they're talking about the job. She asks him if he went the following day. He says no, but he was curious though. The elevator is broken so they have to carry all this food up the stairs. And when they get to the office, some had poured into the bag. Personally, that's motivation to at least check out what that other job is saying. I'm not encouraging crime though. I'm just saying, you know. While she's at the office, Liz calls her and basically tells her that there's actually no space in the office for her. With how bad a day she has had, are you surprised that Emily is now waiting for the text from those guys? It's past one now and the phone is still so dry. Just like my phone is all day. I have no friends. She ends up getting fed up and throws the burner in the bin and leaves. But then suddenly she hears a beep and quickly comes back. She checks and there's a text. Yes or no? We all know what her answer was. 
She drives to meet the men in the van, and they go off to a new location. It's just her and one guy who had the balls to come back. The man hands both of them black cards and gives them instructions. The biggest risk in today's gig is that with the purchase of this size, the bank will call the vendor. So she just has 8 minutes to make the purchase and disappear. If not, they'll find out the card is fake, and trouble comes soon after that. She walks in pretty confidently, goes up the stairs, and knocks on the door. Apparently it's a car she's there to buy, and the two men in the office are speaking a foreign language, and that is scaring me. But Emily seems calm. She says she doesn't want to see the car or test drive it, and the men get suspicious, because it is a little unusual, but they eventually agree to let her pay. She brings out a check and then the card. He asks to see a driver's license, she shows him, he checks it, and then he swipes the card. The moment he does, her eyes go straight to the clock. It's 2.41 now. Tension is building. He asks her to sign something then hands her back the card and tells her to fill a waiver that absolves them of any mechanical issue from that day. She hurriedly fills it because time is going and they take her out to the car. That's a pretty sweet whip, but just when she's about to drive away, the guy with her gets a call and tells her to just hold on a moment. When he drops the call, he tells her to turn off the engine and follow him back to the office. He's pretty calm. He says he forgot something small and it's not a big deal, but we all know what it really is. When he notices that she knows what's going on, he tries to drag her out of the car, but she manages to overpower him and drive off. Alpha female moment. Now we get a sweet car chase as she tries to escape him with her bloodied nose. She's blocked by a truck, so she comes down from her car, pepper sprays him, and makes her way out. She's clear now. She drops the car off the guys and she looks like she's done with them. She's dropping F-bombs and throwing gang signs and she doesn't care for the help they're offering. She just takes her money and dips. But she's outside now and she seems like she's having a hard time breathing. Yusuf then comes out and helps her calm down and even drives her home. They get to her house and he offers to come up and help her put ice on her face to stop it from swelling. She's blushing like a little girl and you won't believe that this was the same Emily who was swearing at this same guy just minutes ago. He actually does a pretty nice job preparing the ice for her. Now they're sitting at the dining table and he's looking at her sketches. Then he shows her a place he wants to buy and renovate. That makes her wonder how much he's really making. Now, this lady who was fed up with the job just minutes ago is asking Yusuf to show her the ropes. Buddy gets a call and has to leave so they don't finish that conversation. She tries to return the burner phone, but he asks her to keep it, saying, Now you have my number. Smooth moves. She's back to work the following day and she apologizes to Javier for the previous day. And all he says is, Marco wants to talk to you. Marco is the boss. She goes to his office and he queries her about yesterday and takes her off the calendar for a few days as punishment. She protests, but Marco basically tells her that she doesn't have rights because she's an independent contractor and not an employee. Wow. Next, we see Yusuf actually showing her the ropes. He then takes her to a warehouse where he gives her the three cardinal rules of the business. Don't mess with ATMs, don't meet customers at your home, and the most important, don't go to the same store more than once in a week. Since she'll be dealing with a lot of cash, he gives her a taser for protection. She's graduated from pepper spray level now, though frankly pepper spray is more effective. Trust me, I know from personal experience. Haha. <laughs> Finally, Yusuf tells her that if she makes less than 5k, she can keep it, but if she makes more than that, then they would need to move her to the next level. So Emily goes home. There's a party happening at her house, by the way, but nothing interesting. She starts practicing how to do card fraud in her room. It's like practicing magic with cards, but the goal is to make the money disappear. Later, she has her first deal. Some two big guys try to rip her off, but she stands her ground and makes 600 bucks. Then one of the guy asks, what else you got? And that motivates her to go extra hard. Oh, and by the way, she did not abandon her food delivery job. That's smart. She's combining the two pretty well, and she's now making some real money doing the card thing. So much money that she has to buy a safe. Just do what they do in Breaking Bad. Turn all the money into a bed. Later, we find out Liz has to travel. She drops her dog off with Emily to help watch him while she's away. But this dog is not a good boy at all. He's making hella noise and depriving Emily of sleep. Next day, she goes to meet Yusuf, and that means she has passed her 5k target. Now he's about to hook her up with bigger numbers. While she waits for him to sort some stuff out, she brings up small talk, and then Yusuf's cousin, Khalil, comes in. He doesn't seem excited about Emily being there, so he asks for a word with Yusuf outside. Later that night, she gets a call for business. She goes out to meet the person, and when she's heading back to her room, two people follow her and pin her down with a knife to her neck. The guy says he does what she does, and he knows what's up. So he asks her where the cash is, and she says she has no cash on her. After he threatens her further. She tells them where the safe is, so they take all the money and leave. They even take Liz's dog too, but that's kind of a good thing. Emily's really shaken. As soon as they're out of the door, she runs to lock it. Now they may have taken Liz's dog, but Emily really has that dog in her. She refuses to let these guys just go free. She takes her taser and walks to their car. She tases the man and threatens the lady before taking the dog and the money and leaving. Based. Anyway, we now see her returning Liz's dog. Liz is having a little party, so she introduces Emily to a couple of her co-workers, and when one of the 
the guys, Taylor, asks her what she does. She just says credit card fraud. For real. Unfortunately, we don't even get to see his reaction, but I know homeboy would have been shook. Anyway, Emily invites Yusuf for the party, and when he shows up, she introduces him to Liz. Then later, when they're having a conversation, Yusuf asks Emily if she wants him to pretend to be her boyfriend, and she says yes. Well, that's one way to ask a girl out. I will definitely be using this strategy. Anyway, Liz catches Emily later and tells her that someone at her office is leaving, and she asks Emily if she can come in for an interview. Emily says sure. They get back to the party, take a couple shots, and then it's time for Emily and Yusuf to leave. While they're leaving, Emily grabs Yusuf, pushes him to the wall, and moving on. The next day, they go check out the house Yusuf wants to buy, and then they sit on the floor to eat and drink. They talk about her art and all the other things that make her happy, including traveling and living in South America. They're just having a cute little moment. You know the type of stuff couples do. Can't relate. But hey, let's not forget, they're just pretend boyfriend and girlfriend, remember? In fact, Yusuf even takes her to see his mom, all just for pretend. Yeah, right. His mom is really cool. While the party of three are still having a good time, Yusuf's cousin and some other guy come in. They're now showing them a video of Emily at a store. Apparently, she was at the same store twice in a week, breaking the most important rule and putting them all at risk. Khalil is really mad because if they catch her, they catch them too. The next day, Emily goes to Liz's office and Liz is showing her how things work around here. Next, we see Emily pick Yusuf up and he's bleeding and not very willing to talk. He just tells her to drive. They get home and he tells her it's an issue with his cousin. Khalil hasn't paid Yusuf in months now. And yes, you guessed right. It's because of Emily. Now Yusuf might lose that apartment he wants to buy because of this. So Yusuf tells Emily that he's going to clean out the bank account, the storage unit, and the office the next day. And he asks her if she's in. She's not exactly sure about joining him, but he tells her that if he does it alone, Khalil will still blame her. For clarity, she asks, so you're just going to rob him? And Yusuf says yes, and that he'll give her a cut to pay off all her debt, get a new place, travel, and do whatever she wants. The next day, Emily goes in for her interview at Liz's office. It's going well until Emily finds out that she'll be an unpaid intern for like five or six months. And then she starts getting uncomfortable and throwing glances at Liz. Like, excuse me, I'm poor in dollars, pounds, and crypto. How can I afford to work regular hours and not get paid for half a year? And you can trust Emily to be blunt about it. She straight up asks the interviewer how she feels so comfortable asking someone to work without pay. Excellent question, girl. Which reminds me, I need to start paying my video editor. Anyway, things escalate from there and it ends with Emily walking out on the interview and dropping an F-bomb before she leaves. I'm sure she'll never be hearing from Liz again, and I'm also sure she doesn't care. With all that anger in her, she goes straight to Yusuf and is ready to rob that stupid cousin. But they head to the warehouse and the office and find out that they've all been cleared out already. Yusuf calls the bank and finds out that that has also been cleared out. He's seething now. Basically, Khalil beat him to his own game. He tells Emily to go, but she's trying to calm him down, telling him it's all going to be okay. But he turns and starts blaming her for hitting the same store twice in one week, but she's not letting him turn this on her. She tells him Khalil was always going to do that to him because he didn't fight back soon enough. Yusuf is yelling now because he has lost literally everything, and then Emily just asks where Khalil is. He tells her, and she says they should just pull up on him right away. She really wants that smoke. Yusuf doesn't think it's a very good idea because he won't be alone and all that, but Emily manages to get into Yusuf's head and he agrees to go. She heads to the kitchen where she works to get some weapons, and I was wrong earlier. She does hear back from Liz, but who cares? She's got business to attend to. They pull about this bougie neighborhood and before they get down, Yusuf asks her what her assault conviction was for and she says it was just this guy she was dating. Uh oh, that's a red flag. They used to fight a lot and one day she just really beat the crap out of him but she's now saying that her mistake was not going far enough because if she did, he would not have been able to call the police. Yusuf, you gotta run man. Anyway, Emily heads to knock at the door. Someone opens and she pretends to be delivering for Khalil. After managing to convince the guy to step out of the door, she tases him and he falls to the ground. They pick him up, tie him up, and put him in the trunk of the car. I wish a girl would do that to me. They ask him a few questions, then ask him to unlock his phone. Then they close the car. They mention they would be taking the car to the next street. Then they head into the apartment. Inside the apartment, Yusuf texts one of the guys with the phone of the guy they have tied up, saying he has just been carjacked and he's on the next street over. The men pass the message to Khalil and then get up to leave. Yusuf and Emily's plan is working like a charm, because now they have emptied the house and they now go up to Khalil's room. The shower is running, but no one is in there. Then Khalil sneaks up on Yusuf and bonks him from behind. Emily then tries to tase him, but she misses. He throws her to the ground and is now strangling her, but not in the fun way. She's almost gone, but she manages to reach out for a knife in her pocket and stab him. Now she's on top. She asks him for the money, but he says there's nothing in the house. He insists there's nothing until she threatens to massage his throat, and then he says there's cash in the fridge. She runs down to the fridge and finds all the cash there, then goes back up to take Yusuf and leave. But Emily 
a compassionate queen, so she gives Khalil his phone and asks him to call himself an ambulance. She gets Yusuf to the car, but she can't find the keys, so she just takes the money and leaves Yusuf there. Oh, that's cold. She gets on a bus. The next day, the police raid her home, but they don't find her there. She's in South America walking down the street, sketching and swimming in the beach. Sometime later, we see her talking to a bunch of people and giving the exact same speech Yusuf gave the first time she saw him, only that this time, it's in Spanish. She has taken the business model and exported it to a different continent. Capitalism moment. Moral of the story? It's okay if you get away with it.